For the second time in my life, I'm guilty of committing a crime. Being horrifically ill-prepared for my fantasy football draft. Cause I doubt my league mates minded my team finishing 3-10, and ten, earning the ridicule of not just my friends and family, but of every man, woman, and child I've ever encountered. But this season, I find I'm so excited I can barely sit still or hold a thought in my head. I think it's the excitement only a future hashtag Foot Clan champion can feel. A future champ at the start of a long journey, whose conclusion is dispersing a wide range of insults upon my roommates. Things like, you're one pathetic loser, or you must be a major disappointment to your parents, or my personal favorite, you suck. But face. You know who's gonna be the toilet bowl champion this year? Not me. Not me. To join me on this journey, head to www.ultimatedraftkit.com. I hope to see you there. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. What did you want something? Are there games today? <laughs> Aren't wow. They? Still football time. Yeah, this is still football time. <laughs> Welcome into the show. It doesn't happen every time there's a game, Jason. We don't do it on Mondays. Okay, all right. I don't I'm just, look, I'm still learning the rules. There's there's it's the start of the week. You got something yesterday. Got a little bit of something. You had a question mark yeah. on it, but you got something. Yeah, and we got something yesterday. Just a little bit. Just a taste. It'll be okay. We'll have real football time soon enough. Welcome in one and all to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Back with you. You can find us over on Twitter at the FF Ballers. You can find us on YouTube if you uh those of you watching, hello, greetings. Hello. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Subscribe. Click the bell. We've got a live stream coming up. A very special oh. one. You're gonna want to be notified. Yes. I'm not going to tell you more than that. We will later, but yeah, I mean, but as of today, just go click the bell. UltimateDraftKit.com. I mean, you you can listen to this show and be prepared for your draft, but you can take it to the next level and pick up the draft kit, the cheat sheet creator, import your league settings, and go to your draft with a plan. And that's what we want you to do. Uh, check that out at UltimateDraftKit.com. Quick reactions to last night's games before we get into the news and uh we are doing a mock draft on today's show it's going to be a battle <clears throat> because we are drafting four five six and it's a 10 team <clears throat> three wide receiver ppr mock draft live not sure i feel great being in the middle oh, of yeah. oh both i'm like there is no situation where i will not be sniped you every single time you go to picks <laughs> someone will be sniping right before you that's it's correct. fantastic um but last night we had a couple of football games saw cj stroud get run all over the place uh threw an interception faced that uh pass rush in new england it's over davis mills look it's, it's looked pretty good sent stroud to the bench it's done the general the career is done um the rookies last night were the highlight for me. Uh, mm -hmm. In both games, you, you saw good things from Jordan Addison, <clears throat> great things from uh, Tank Dell. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it, it, you know, Zach Charbonnet didn't get a ton of work. He was fine. He had, he had one kind of, I think, impressive physical play that uh, caught your eye. And then I you love to see the coaches' comments after the game, to me, stood out, where – you know, um, Kevin O'Connell coming out and talking about Ty Chandler, mm -hmm. the uh, the backup to Alexander Madison, or battling to be the backup. And then you saw comments from Pete Carroll kind of uh, positive towards Zach Charbonnet, although he did 
uh, play behind DJ Dallas in this one. Yeah, I mean, I I think you you mentioned most of the takeaways that got I got them all. Uh, to me, <laughs> what's it was left, Jay? Tank Dell and Ty Chandler. Those were the two takeaways. Uh, I'm going to keep my eyes on Tank Dell. Uh, you've you've got to really focus your eyes on him <laughs> so you don't miss because uh, he is poquito. He's but a, he's, he's a smaller fellow. He's a small guy, but he looked good. I mean, he's a talented wide receiver. Mm -hmm. You just don't ever really buy into someone of that archetype succeeding for fantasy football just because it's I don't know never happened um but he is really good and he looked the part uh against NFL defenders and then yeah Ty Chandler he certainly got the uh job opportunity given to him to to be that next back for and the Vikings really good yeah the coach the coach was very happy with him after the game uh 29 yards through the air 41 yards on the ground was pretty good Mike anything to add uh no my biggest watch for this was the I wanted to see how the Vikings backups handled and Ty Chandler it wasn't just running the ball I mean the the Kevin O'Connell quote was essentially we love to see it he's picking up yards where there wasn't even yards to be picked up you had he looked pretty good in pass protection as well Alexander Madison was held out I think in Wang Wu is, is currently hurt he's kind of the the other threat to to be the backup but when you show out on tape when the lights are on like that, that makes a big impression on your coach. All right, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, we don't have uh, adductorindex.com, but George Kittle would be on it. Dealing with a strain in camp, expected to be sidelined for the next week. Already had a groin injury, uh, what was that, uh, last August? Missed some games due to that. This is, I mean, we're it's part of the resume. Of it is George Kittle at this point uh, doesn't play complete <clears throat> seasons. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna use the brittle <laughs> word. Won't do it. But, but it rhymes. But people have done it. Uh, and then I wanted to mention mm -hmm. this. We didn't talk about it yesterday. Uh, you know, d it's just a something to. Yeah, I don't, it's to. hard because they don't want to overstate it, and I don't want to understate it, but Joe Mixon has two legal situations still to be um, – they still need to figure out what's going on with both of them. He had a, a situation at his home where uh, somebody that was at his residence um, fired a weapon, shot somebody. There's a, a civil lawsuit. At – I don't think I don't think anybody got actually got hit in the, hit. Hit in yeah, the, the foot. foot. Oh, hit got hit in, in the, foot? the foot. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, you know, you can go read what took place and transpired. Joe Mixon's being represented uh, in a civil lawsuit as somebody that was uh, partially responsible for that event, and then there is a a second trial and event that is taking place with regards to, and I don't know all the details, Mike, but it was a brandishing accusation yeah. intimidation type of thing with a weapon is so this... a couple weapon related things with joe mixon that i don't currently think they're going to impact this season this the the one that's going to trial of kyle hopefully you can correct me if i'm wrong this was the weird one where it was over the off season where it's the news came out that it was simply a threat of a firearm then it was perhaps there was actually a brandishing of a firearm. It's a and, misdemeanor charge of aggravated menacing yeah, over and, allegations of pointing a gun at a woman back in April. And this is and then the the police looked into it and then they dropped the case. So we all had kind of moved on, but they said at the time, We're gonna we're we're dropping it for now because we're gonna be but we're gonna leave it open to gather more information and it has since opened back up. So this is there is a jury trial scheduled for Monday the 14th, so it's it's something to keep an eye on. And generally speaking, for the NFL, they wait until things have fully transpired in, in the legal system before they come down and do something. So I am i don't know how quickly this will move on Monday if this is a vote to go to trial or not. Again, certainly not lawyers. Definitely our least favorite part of, of this job is having to sort through this and figure this stuff out. But it's information that people need to be aware of. There is a situation going on. It's worth saying what we can comment on is that this team has not made roster decisions Correct. that would lead you to believe they're going to be without Joe Mixon in any capacity this year. 
Travion Williams, Chase Brown, um, Chris Evans, Chris Evans, and then Joe Mixon should be the guy. Uh, as opposed to like the Camara situation, they did fill out that backfield in in New Orleans. They knew something was going to happen. Couple of hype train pieces. I mean, I don't I don't know if it's worthy of the actual. Well, yeah, it is. The Eagles won definitely. So let's start there, and then I'll circle back to to the Buffalo situation. But a lot of reports out of camp regarding the running back room in Philadelphia. Uh, Kenneth Gainwell has increasingly been the team's early uh, early down back. He's had more than double the early down touches in training camp than any other running back. He's catching passes. Uh, the reports coming out of Eagles beat writer uh, Shamus Clancy says he's had a much stronger camp than any other back. Vast majority of first team carries. So, when you look at the landscape in Philadelphia, you have two players that were brought in on one-year contracts, Rashad Penny, DeAndre Swift. You have uh, incumbents in Kenneth Gainwell, who who got play last year alongside Miles Sanders and company. Yeah, especially in the playoffs. Uh, you got Boston Scott in, in the picture, and then you have Trey Sermon, who was actually on the roster last year. And if you read what beat writers are talking about with Trey Sermon, they're not treating him like somebody on the roster bubble. They're giving him opportunities. Uh, in fact... Uh, Rashad Penny, I think, has the second fewest first team opportunities at this point. So this is kind of a red alert situation. They, it is. They listed five backs as their number one <laughs> running back. Yeah, the, the, their, their official <laughs> depth chart was hysterical because it, it looks like everybody's normal depth chart. You know, you, oh, who, who's the quarterback one? Who's the quarterback two? Who's, and then at running back, they just got rid of all the positions and put five players with slashes. Just They're all the same. It, it, so what jumps out to me, and see if you agree with this, but like Rashad Penny, DeAndre Swift, draft investments, which they've been the higher draft investments, they seem extremely risky. Like I think we could have a surprise cut of the of DeAndre Swift. Like that type of thing could happen because right now he looks like they're basically saying he's getting less and less involved throughout the training camp time period, only going to be a third down back. I, I, I just wonder if Kenneth Gainwell is going to be the back to own. Yeah, th there's a, a real strong possibility that there isn't a back to, to roster here because, you know, if, if Kenny Gainwell is more of the between the 20s type of running back, um, he he's not going to score enough fantasy points. Um, th I think they might just have a massive rotation here, and we'll have to wait and see. They're Not all of these players are going to make the roster, so um, I think the way that one beat reporter put it was with Rashad Penny, he is either really on the roster bubble and might not make the team, or they're so confident that he is their one that they're resting him. That, that was his takeaway, and it's like, no one knows. No one has any idea what this rotation is going to look like right now. Yeah, so it, it just casts a big shadow of doubt over, you know, all of these players, and they could certainly get by with a more Kansas City Chiefs backfield committee situation. I mean, these are the two Super Bowl teams, and they both don't really have a 1A. It's like 1A, 1B, 1C, you know, combination. I would say it. I think the, the biggest – takeaway for me is I agree we don't this is a it seems like it's a bigger mess than we had hoped for I've made some adjustments I've kind of been on team Rashad Penny the entire offseason and I have to slowly back away from that with the information we currently have but the bigger takeaway is DeAndre Swift is still being drafted in on sleeper right now in the sixth round like this is a this is a full red alert for you can't spend a six rounder on DeAndre Swift with this type of information. Rashad Penny becomes a pretty iffy pick, but he's you know he's going back in the ninth round. Meanwhile, Kenneth Gainwell, he, he's in, he, like that's the end of the end of your draft. Like if you're in a home league, he's going to be a a sneaky last round or second to last round of your positional players. So I, I'm I'm more open to the idea of him. I'm, I'm more bullish than Jason laid out because Gamewell does have pass catching in his profile. Like Rashad Penny, that's he's never been used like that in the pros, but Kenny Gamewell can get it done in all aspects. So if he ends up being the majority running back, I think he's going to have a very strong season. Uh, 5'9", 200, only 121 career rushing attempts, has had 79 targets over two years, 56 receptions on those 79 targets. Let's 
pay close attention for the next couple of weeks in Philadelphia. Yep. And now let's move on to the running back room in Buffalo. Damian Harris missing time lately, knee injury. Um, but when you look at what beat writers are talking about Buffalo camp, Jason, most impressive players at camp thus far, James Cook, mm -hmm. uh, who's going to have a huge opportunity with the first team this year. Great pass catching ability. Dalton Kincaid, the rookie uh, tight end. In fact, both tight ends are having great camps. Mm -hmm. And Latavius Murray. <laughs> oh, what is happening? La, la, Latavius. <laughs> I, you know, I. it's funny because like two days ago I said that the team added these backs and they want production from them. They don't care about our fantasy football hierarchy or who we think can contribute or whether we think Damian Harris never got a fair shake in New England, blah, 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 blah. Here's what they care about. Latavius Murray has gone out there, got it done in practice, Huge plays. I mean, they're 71-yard touchdown in practice the other day. Chunk play after chunk play. He's 33. Yeah. He's, How is he ripping off a 71-yard touchdown? Is this the drill where you can't tackle? I mean, <laughs> at, at this point in time, Latavius Murray, who has been, you know, he's had spurts of, of value in New Orleans and then Denver. Like, it's looking right now like Latavius Murray is going to have real opportunities on the goal line for this team. That's yeah. what I think is going to happen. And, and he's I, fully irrelevant for your fantasy leagues as far as drafting him, but what, what that does matter for is James Cook. Uh, James Cook, to me, is a very exciting back. His his drum beat the entire – from from uh, from mini camp, training camp, been ev strong. has been – everyone said he is the star of Buffalo's camp. The issue becomes, for fantasy purposes, will he be allowed to have touchdowns inside the, you know, in the green zone? Is that going to be a role that they'll even put him on the field for? Because in training camp right now, it looks like it's not. Now, he can get his touchdowns from, you know, 10 yards out, 20 yards out, 40 yards out, and I think you'll see some of those. Uh, but if Latavius Murray keeps playing as well as he has been playing in camp, then when they get down near the goal line, is going to be the 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 bigger, stronger Murray in there. If it you're, could uh, leave Damian Harris in a precarious situation too. Could. If Murray's the goal line and James Cook is getting a lot of like Damian Harris is not going to catch passes. No. So then, like, you're getting some <clears throat> spelling of James Cook snaps, and yep. it's a situation we will be keeping an eye on. And I would just throw out: if you're playing Dynasty, Latavius Murray could. <laughs> Could be on that waiver wire, like when when people had to make cuts to put those rookies. I'm sure if if Latavius was on my team, I'd be like, "Oh, easy. That's an easy cut. Thirty three. Ah, get out of here." But he might be there. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/insurance. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. Oh boy! Yeah, don't mind me. That was an intentional sound you made. Mm hmm. That was an. an that was a roar. Yeah, uh, that was a little bit lazy on the roar side. I'm I'm reserved, Andy. Sometimes Pre lions are sleepy. Preseason levels. Yes, it was a preseason roar. Uh, we are hopping into a mock draft live on the show today. Head to head to head, <laughs> three of us going at it. Ten team draft. First time we've done a mock draft ten team format. We've had that request. Also doing a full PPR, not a half PPR, and we're throwing three wide receivers into the starting lineup along with two running backs, a quarterback, a tight end, and a flex and four bench. So it's going to be a little different, Jason. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a little different. I'm starting at the four spot, um, and the fact that it's full PPR uh, right now, we could say that the draft started with Christian McCaffrey, Justin Jefferson, and Austin Eckler. Um, which I don't, I mean, in a full PPR, those are three likely picks up top. Now sitting here at the four, I have to decide between, to me, it's Jamar Chase or Cooper Cup. In a full PPR, Cooper Cup, I mean, he should be the wide receiver one. But since he's running, he, yeah, he's running, he's back. But since he carries a little bit more risk with the risk of Matthew Stafford staying healthy without a good offensive line and and his own injuries coming back from, you know, the injury last season, having the injury currently, I I can't take that risk when Jamar Chase is sitting there. So I will select Jamar Chase. You're a monster. Yeah, I know you wanted him. 
uh, I, w I did want to jump in real quick and just talk about the difference between half and full PPR and how certain fantasy wide receivers do perform differently based on those formats, you know, where, um, you know, Christian Watson, Deontay Johnson, Gabe Davis, Josh Palmer, we looked at their performance. Um, there were only five wide receivers that shifted more than three spots based on the format change. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, those were those guys. Um, you, Christian Watson uh, in full, he was down six Let's spots. Say he moved down because he was all just – it was one catch. It's big play guy. Um, whereas like someone like Deontay Johnson, seven spots better in a full PPR because he's a possession type of receiver. Gabe Davis makes perfect sense. You bring him into a half or a standard format, the value goes up. Babe Davis makes big plays. Gabe the babe. Uh, and then like Josh Palmer is five spot difference, better in full. Adam Thielen better in full. You know, you got to break it down by that big play versus Moved like possession. From wide receiver 80 to 31 to 36, <laughs> Mike. The, the, the Adam Thielen, like the turning on Adam Thielen, it's ageism. You're both guilty of it. There's no need to be that. I mean, you used to like the guy. I love, yeah. I yeah. love Adam Thielen. And then, no, it's not, not like you not, had. I love Adam Thielen. Not lies. For, not for no. fantasy. Dirty lies. Not for fantasy. I hate Adam Thielen for fantasy in 2023 because he's uh, the only reason is because he's not going to be good um, for fantasy. I love Adam Thielen, the man, and I have been a big proponent of him for fantasy when he was good. Yeah, Andy's voice tells me he didn't draft Adam Thielen last year. So, yeah, and you, pretending did. like he had 50 spots <laughs> difference from where he finished, tells me you did. Yeah, I did. So that's how a, that's like uh, the retrospective <laughs> ADP is based on your biases. Uh, Jason went with Jamar Chase. The only question mark around Chase is whether Joe Burrow will be out there in week one. There's a brand new injury uh, blitz podcast, 33 minutes long. Uh oh, it's beefy. From Matthew Betts that just hit our uh, Patreon at jointhefoot.com. Was listening this morning. Uh, he threw shade on the idea that you know Cincinnati came out and thought it was a you know a grade one injury for Joe Burrow. He says that's hogwash. You know, it was definitely a grade two injury. So it's very questionable of whether he'll be back and ready to go. Okay. So that could put Jamar Chase in a different quarterback category for a couple of weeks. But look, Jamar Chase is just too good of a ceiling to pass on there. I actually am having a hard time right here. It's not Cooper Cup. I'm not I'm not worried about Cooper Cup right here. I'm not gonna take him because I have Tyreek Hill ranked higher than Cooper Cup. I don't have to worry about the injury situation. I don't have to worry about a fragile line and a fragile fragile quarterback and a fragile hamstring. So well, maybe the fragile quarterback. But Tyreek Hill I have ranked higher, so he he would be the pick here as three wide receiver. However, I am facing a dilemma. It's a ten team league. I like the value of having the premium tight end oh. when you're in a 10-team format uh, because it's it's just even more of an advantage than it is in a 12- or 14-team league. Travis Kelsey at, at 105 as a marked advantage uh, above you two gentlemen. It's interesting. So that's what I'm debating is the Tyreek Hill versus Travis Kelsey. I figured because of the 10-team format here that one of you two would be selecting Kelsey. I, it is one of those things where every team is going to be a little bit better than you, what you're used to seeing in 12-team leagues. And so you really do need the positional difference makers who will give you an advantage over over other uh, teams. I'm going to go with Tyreek Hill. I'm going to let the three wide receiver format uh, win it out for me. It's just such an expensive pick for Travis Kelsey. Thought long and hard about it, but... Um, Jason has Jamar Chase. I'm going to take Tyreek Hill here at the 105 and hand that Kelsey baton to Mike, see what he wants to do here, whether he goes with Cooper Cup or not. Uh, I knew as soon as Eckler was the, the number three pick, I knew I would just get whoever was left over of the big wide receivers. So now I just have to worry about is Cooper Cup number one or number two. All right, the rest of the first round, Kelsey went right after our three wide receiver picks. Then C.D. Lamb, who's been having an amazing camp in Dallas, B. John Robinson, and Stephon Diggs rounding out the top 10. We'll circle back to the second round in a second.
All right, we're through one round. Full PPR, 10-team, three-wide receiver, mock draft. Jason has Jamar Chase. I have Tyreek Hill. Mike has Cooper Cup. And here we go in the second round. Saquon off the board first. Then Patrick Mahomes, Nick Chubb, and A.J. Brown. We are back. Mike is on the clock. Someone to pair with Cooper Cup. So I am really struggling here with this pick, which sounds a little bit ridiculous, but let me explain. So in my rankings, now maybe this this is tough here. It's, it's Devontae Adams is clearly my highest ranked wide receiver. He's sitting at wide receiver eight for me. And and yet, I find myself struggling. Do I go with him, or in the because it's the PPR? Do I take the safety of Amon Ra and eliminate the the hullabaloo of the Raiders and Jimmy Garoppolo? And I know Andy, you'd, you're strongly would you would just be like, yep, Devonte Adams. The full PPR and my I'm very bullish on Amon Ra as well, so I I'm very comfortable with whoever you decide to take. And then at the at the running back position, like. Because it's three wide receiver, full PPR with the flex, this is if you are going to go with a, a hero RB or a zero RB build, this is where you do it. This is this is exactly where you do it. But Tony Pollard is there. I think he's going to catch a whole bunch of passes as well. And I, I feel very comfortable with him. And I, I guess there is a little bit of discomfort going with Devontae Adams, which is one of those things that could be very, very silly in about – four weeks but i'm gonna go i'm gonna take tony pollard here yes well that's great because <laughs> jason jason knows what the situation is uh and i'm gonna take Devonte <clears throat> adams in the second round so jason yes! will, jason will be able to select who he desires what are, what are the fist pumps for? the fist pumps are for Amon ross st brown nice uh i would i i, w I mean he's in PPR for me, he's clearly the highest ranked guy here. He's ahead of a lot of people that, uh, you know, are, would usually go ahead of him. I think at a full PPR three wide receiver to get uh, <laughs> Almond Ra in the second is a delight. I was worried because to me, there was Devontae Adams and there was uh, Almond Ra. <clears throat> I would have taken Almond Ra over Devontae Adams just for the whole avoiding the chance that the Raiders implode. Yeah, I mean, last year, Devontae Adams had 44 more targets than Amon Ra St. Brown. I'm very cozy with Adams. I think I would have been cozy with Amon Ra had Mike taken Adams. So through two rounds, Mike has Cup and Pollard, the only one of us with a running back on the roster. Mm -hmm. I have Hill and Adams. Jason has Chase and Amon Ra St. Brown. The rest of the second round went three running backs, unfortunately. Henry, Taylor, Jacobs. Jacobs now at 210. In this uh, mock draft, Jalen Waddle. Uh, I love Jonathan Taylor and Josh Jacobs. They're just right next to each other where it's like, uh, okay, the the tier is like, we got to take the chance on them now at the back of the second. But every time I'm looking at those guys, I'm like, right now, uh, no thank you. Jalen Waddle, Garrett Wilson, and Jalen Hurts off the board in the third round Jason, I'm already. I can tell you right now. I I hate being in between both of you two, because I at every at every moment I get to listen to analysis of maybe you taking my player. Yeah. So go ahead and make your selection, Mr. Jamar Chase, Amon Ross, St. Brown. You should already know who I am selecting. This is an automatic yeah. for me this year. The fact that it's a ten team league, you know, you I, thought, I thought about it in the second because yeah. I'm mapping it out of we're we're headed back out in the third round and Jason's in front of me and I know that. If I don't take that player here, I'm not going to get him. Yeah, the positional advantage, there are only two to me at the tight end position. It's Travis Kelsey and it's Mark Andrews. I am much happier to have Mark Andrews paired with Jamar Chase in the first than I would have been, you know, Travis Kelsey and what wide receivers left on the board right now. It would have been uh, T. Higgins or someone like that. I would have taken Mark Andrews. And uh, I haven't done that very much. But in this format in the third round, <clears throat> I definitely would have taken him. So... We're right on schedule with the <laughs> with the uh, round by round with the sni sniping. Yeah. Uh, however, it does leave me with uh, I think the best running back on the board, especially in a full PPR. I'm sorry, but I am taking Ramondre Stevenson in the okay. third round. I yeah. <laughs> 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 like because 
for those tracking, look, because <clears throat> we get the people who are like tracking the mock draft and looking at the rankings. It's like, Mike, you have Ramondre so much, you have a few spots higher than Tony Pollard. Yeah, I do. But Ramondre Stevens, Stevenson, I was playing a little bit of a gamble that Ramondre was going to drop to me with my next pick. So it almost I, worked. It almost worked. Got all the way back to one spot before you. Can you can you explain that one more <clears throat> time? Because we had a show last week, top ten running backs. There were YouTube comments and tweets and uh, exasperated uh, individuals because look, Mike's got Ramondre at three, so he likes him better than these players. But talk about what you just said. Just because sure. you have him ranked at three, where you think he will finish at the season doesn't mean that you just draft him ahead of other players. Absolutely. This is I don't mind. Like if people if 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 you're out there and you're as bullish on Ramondre as I am, I don't care about it. take him in the second round. That's that's perfectly fine. But you have to know what's going on in the market. You have you have to use the ADP to your advantage because it's it would be ending up with Tony Pollard and Ramondre Stevenson is an incredible get for my team. But if I take Ramondre Stevenson there at 2.5, there is a 0.0 chance that I get Tony Pollard and Ramondre Stevenson where I took the gamble. It didn't work out, but I do have a, a decent percentage chance if I'm targeting both those running backs. I could get them both, but I definitely can if I start with the player who's, uh, even though he's ranked higher for me, he's he's lower in the ADP. So you got to, these are, you, you pick your, you pick your spots where you want to take these chances. You were one, Andy away from Ramondre in the third, being able right. to stack those two players, but you can't. So Cooper Cup, Tony Pollard, and uh, you know Olave is on the board. Yes, uh, he is, but not anymore. <laughs> that was the the only thing that that gave me comfort. I in the, in the moment was like I'm like, oh, Ramondre is going to drop to me. I honestly thought, man, if I played the game and Ramondre drops to me, and Olave did drop to me. I would have, I would have had an existential crisis with that third Staring round pick. Staring them both down, but you you made it easier for me. Chris Olave there as my my runner up for the third round. I love Chris Olave. I've talked about it a lot. I, he was outpacing Garrett Wilson as a rookie. He just happened to miss a few games. His yards per route run, targets per route run are like truly in the elite category. I think by next year we're talking about Olave as one of the true elite wide receivers. Also, beat writers talking about contested catches becoming a part of his repertoire in camp this year. Yeah, his in the again training camp got to filter everything, but everything has, has been incredibly positive for Mister Olave. Well, after Olave in the third round, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow back to back, <clears throat> then T Higgins, Burrow's teammate, DK Metcalf. I had some dreams of Metcalf sliding all the way back. They're dead. Devontae Smith went next, and then a trifecta of running backs etn Brees hall and Najee harris so mike uh three running backs went off the board real quick you are back on the clock with the fifth pick of the fourth round i'm going to take a pick that our own kyle borgannoni is probably mm. screaming don't do it don't do it right he i hates hate him. this player but it's mr keenan allen it, it is the quintessential ppr him and amon ross st brown are the ppr bros i definitely have some uh, some real fragility on this roster build going with Cooper Cup and Keenan Allen, two of the not young wide receivers in the NFL, but I still believe that they have at least one more year left. We're in a three wide receiver league, still two running backs, quarterback, tight end, flex. This is the position in a three wide receiver mm -hmm. league where I'm actually not looking to fill my third wide receiver, especially in a 10 team. Like, I, if the player's there that jumps off that I have to have, sure. But there's a lot of wide receivers I still love. I love Debo Samuel. I love Ridley. Um, I, I love DJ Moore. I, I think that I can fill that third spot and prioritize a very difficult position to fill at running back here. If Ramondre mm. wasn't on the board at 305, let's say Jason took him at 304, my pick would have been rookie Jameer Gibbs. Mm-hmm. He's on the board at 406 here in a full PPR. That would be a great pick. And so Stevenson Gibbs at uh, – Oh, after, you took him. Yeah, after going Tyreek Hill and Devontae Adams to me is a, a, a brilliant start in this. Uh, if I 
say so myself. Yeah, yeah. Just a brilliant, <laughs> magnificent start. Now, I'm really happy with that. I want to hand it back to Jason here. He has Chase, Amon Ra, and Mark Andrews. Yeah, so I was looking at a couple of running backs that I really hoped got back to me. It was Jameer Gibbs and Joe Mixon. For my specific team, I would usually take Jameer Gibbs first. He's younger, more explosive, and this is a full PPR. He's a pass-catching monster. Um, however, I have Amon Ross St. Brown, and I really didn't want to go that heavy in my first four picks. Even with your earlier lion roar? Uh, yeah, even with that roar. I mean, it's, you know, I, I get it. Mm, you would false think. advertising. Uh, false roaring. But we talked about it. Joe Mixon was on pace for like 100 targets in his games played last year. They lose Samaj P. Ryan. I know he's got the legal stuff we talked about, but at this point in the fourth round, when I don't have a running back to be able to take, you know, a, a star like that, I will take Joe Mixon. All right, Joe Mixon to Jason's roster. Kenneth Walker, Debo, oh, Debo. You're you're the you're bangled up over there, Jay. Yeah, I am, and and it's ironic because I talked about Amon Ra and uh, Jameer Gibbs not wanting them. It's the difference between what I believe in the Bengals versus the Lions. I think both are good, but the Bengals are clearly a better offense. And technically, the roar also works with the Bengals, so <clears throat> you're in good shape. Oh, good, Debo, uh, Aaron <laughs> Jones. You, it was right there for I you, know, Jay. You I could know. have said it wasn't a lion. All right. J Justin Fields, first pick of the fifth round, TJ Hawkinson, Amari Cooper, Jason, back on the clock. Uh, some of the top running backs by ADP right now, one of them, he didn't play last night. Good. That, which that, he's the dude. That's, and Devin Singletary did. Uh, that, Damian Pierce. I think that we didn't bring that up at the beginning, but that is definitely a signal to follow. That Much like Alexander Madison did not play for the Minnesota Vikings, Damian Pierce didn't play, and Devin Singletary did. The backup did. All right, Jason, you are sitting here with Chase, Amon Ross, St. Brown, two wide receivers. You got a tight end in Andrews and just picked up Mixon. Yeah, this is the round where I think that the value at quarterback <clears throat> to take a really difference making, you know, this, we talked about a 10, 10 team. You've got to have those positional <laughs> advantages. Um, I'm just trying to decide between two quarterbacks that I love. Usually, right. Lamar Jackson is off the board here. You're going double onesies. I'm going double onesies when when I you know it's it's a, a third and a fifth, and I think both are actually good values. Um, they will. I, I think they'll make a big difference for me. Is this a four point or a six point per passing touchdown league? Hmm. Because that's the I difference. I don't know, Kamish. What is this? Four means I take Lamar Jackson. It's also the stack. It is also the stack. I don't with even Mark know how Andrews. you would consider going Justin Herbert there when you have Mark Andrews. Well, I didn't. <laughs> I just love <laughs> Herbert. So here's here's why, Mike. Uh, the reason uh -huh. why is because the plan this year for me is usually to to take either Andrews in the third round and then Herbert or Fields in the fifth, and the plan came, you know. <laughs> it was like, oh, you can do this. But that's because usually Lamar Jackson's not here. So I'll just take the value. All and, right. I'm going to. And the stack. I'm going to circle back to wide receiver position here. Uh, when you have Tyreek Hill and Devontae Adams, you have, I don't know, maybe 400 targets already coming your way. Let's me take a higher upside chance on a wide receiver <laughs> here in the fifth round. A guy that could be top 12 on an offense I love. I'm taking Calvin Ridley in the middle of the fifth round to pair with Adams and Tyreek. Mm. Did you want him? He was in the I, – I, I had kind of narrowed it down to a few players, and he was definitely in there. Of Excellent. Uh, the, the, the idea of him being my flex, like, like Calvin Ridley with that upside as your flex player, is was, was very intriguing to me. So, so Lamar didn't make it to me. That's what I was really hoping for. However, Justin Herbert, my stackable quarterback, because I did draft Keenan Allen, I have Justin Herbert sitting. Oh, let me switch this. Justin Herbert uh, to me right now is quarterback seven in a four point passing touchdown format. Really believe that the bounce back will happen for him this year with Kellen Moore as the offensive coordinator. Just doing a quick double check from the rest of the, uh, you know, like Damian Pierce, Miles Sanders, uh, JK 2L Dobbins. Those are the top three ADP running backs. And then it's, we're in this, we're in this kind of weird wide receiver zone. Or, or or tier or bucket of Hopkins, McLaurin, DJ Moore, Drake London, who I have risen on. But I think I can play a game and still love one of the players coming back. Meanwhile, 
if I don't get Herbert because I'm not on the team Trevor Lawrence, I won't have what I view as an elite quarterback exiting the draft. And so you went with Justin Herbert. I did. Okay. Justin Herbert to Mike's roster. McLaurin, Judy, Kittle, and Pierce round out the fifth round. Drake London, J.K. Dobbins, D.J. Moore starting the sixth round. DeAndre Hopkins off the board right ahead of Mike. And you, well, you've got yourself three wide receivers so far. You've got Tony Pollard and Justin Herbert, and you're on the clock, Mr. Let's, Mike. Let's make that two running backs. We'll just uh -huh. make this one quick and easy. Uh -huh. It is Mr. Alexander Madison who remains – a lower ADP running back. He remains a very polarizing running back. Feels like either you are in or you are completely out, and I remain in. All right. Uh, I am on the clock. I am the only one of us without a quarterback yet, and so Trevor Lawrence here in the sixth round in a 10-team league where I need to have some elite play to pair with Calvin Ridley, oh, it seems like worked the, out. the yeah. perfect situation. The I, I'm a little bit... <laughs> Do you uh -oh. think I'm guaranteed to go that direction? Uh, I, I, I thought you were going that direction. Before it got to you, I hoped that somehow you wouldn't notice him there <laughs> and that you would miss him so I could make fun of you for not yeah. completing the stack. But are you maybe going to choose Here, that Here's the path? problem. The problem is, is that I see a significant tear drop at the running back position if I don't take Miles Sanders here. Mm. And this is, uh, you know, we're in a three wide receiver league. I and but it's ten team. I like the depth at wide receiver. I can get a lot of wide receivers later on that I can take flyers on that I like that will drop. If I don't take Trevor Lawrence, I could take Miles Sanders and add him to Ramondre and Gibbs, and then I could wait and I could take another one of these quarterbacks. But you're dropping down a tier. Um, I think I'm going to go that direction. Uh, I'm going to take Miles Sanders. No, you <laughs> son of a gun. I needed him. I, yeah, you there did. was a huge tear yeah, break did. at the running back position. Oh, did, did, was there now? <laughs> son of a gun. I'm sitting here trying to talk you into taking Trevor Lawrence. You know, that, that's a push comes to shove oh. situation where it's like more fun to take Lawrence, but Dick, Sanders, gonna, Sanders was the right pick. I, I've only got one running back. I, I needed know. Miles Sanders. Now at running back, it's like there are – Guys that I think are have a chance, like Cam Akers. Cameron. Yeah, Cameron could be very, very good this year. I, I also think James Conner, in a PPR where he catches the ball a lot, I think he's good. But that's a huge break to me between the, There is the, a chance I get Lawrence still. Because I'm, nope, you I'm have, drafting you, him. <laughs> I take you're gonna pair Trevor him with Lawrence Lamar Jackson? and Lamar Jackson. And yep. Just immediately offer a trade for Miles Sanders. I am eight picks away, but there's uh, the problem will be team two has no quarterback, but the other three teams have one. Well, so now, this, uh, who do you want, Jason? I, uh, I see Gus I was, Edwards is there. I was ill-prepared because I... Oh, you dirty, rotten scoundrel. Um, very mad at you. Yeah. So, I still only have one running back. Man, there's... Can you just go back and undo that pick? <laughs> I am so tilted are you right not, now. Are you not in the place where you were with Cam Akers? Um um, he's sitting there, James Conner. Uh, no, mean, I, I mean that that's, I, w I would be, you and James Conner about the same age. Oh, there was one player left that I really <laughs> liked and it was Miles Sanders. I, I think uh, Tyler Lockett is a good value, but he'll come back to me in the next round. I don't need to take him here. He'd probably be the wide receiver. I would take uh, ahead of everybody anyway. So I, so then I'm forced to go running back and um, now you're stuck feeling like you're settling. Yeah. And I'm settling on Cameron, but Cam I'm going to take him. Dang Cam Akers, Waller, Godwin, no! Watson, Pitts. Ta! Dre, yes! Yeah! Yes! Yeah! Team two got him. I, Trevor I knew, Lawrence, uh, thank you, team two. Trevor Lawrence off the board. It was one. I knew that was the one. I knew he would. Oh, I knew there was good. a chance I'd get him, but that's okay. I got a contingency plan. Michael Pittman off the board. Jason, you're back on the clock. Oh! Hey, team three so got me. So close to the best draft ever. Team three got me. Darren Waller was... Oh, the target was set up. Yeah. Okay. So we're all, all right. disappointed. This worked out as expected where I get uh, in the seventh round, Tyler Lockett. I, I still believe the value of Tyler Lockett in the seventh round is one of the easiest picks in all of fantasy because he's, e even if he's not a top 15 wide receiver as he's been every year, he's going to outproduce this, this low of a value. Okay. Little bit of a dance to do here again. Uh, I'm going to be honest, since you guys have quarterbacks, I want Sean Watson. That's my target. 
But by sleeper ADP, Dak Prescott is ranked higher, and there's only one team after me here in the draft. This is where 10-team is, is kind of wild because there's only two teams right now without a quarterback. It's Team 10 and myself. So I don't think I have to take Deshaun Watson here. I'm going to play the gamble again. And not, I, you not know, only do you not have to take Deshaun Watson here, you don't have to take him anywhere <laughs> you could I, I thought your I, I thought what you were doing when you made that pivot because you lost your stack with Cal, Calvin Ridley I know you also like Tua and yep, so I I'm thought totally you were playing the game yeah. with Tua because your first pick was Tyree Kill and you'd have that stack totally totally fine with that and so uh here I'm gonna I'm gonna turn back towards uh he's either tight end with Dallas Goddard who I've ranked at number three right now or it's going to be one of these wide receivers I love, Ayuk, Mark Hollywood Brown. I told myself I'd go really quick with this pick, but I'm having a hard time. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with Mike Evans. All right, taking Mike Evans right. a little bit outside of the ADP because I want a quarterback next round. Mike, you're on the clock. I dig it. You have Mike Evans. Which there are certainly some questions about Mike Evans, but having him in the as a fourth wide receiver, maybe as your flex play, I think that's that's super interesting. I'm going to go with Marquise Hollywood Brown. Yep. Uh, number one wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals. Carries a ton of risk due to who in the heck is the quarterback? We just don't know. Kamara, Swift, Ayuk, who I was looking at. Dallas Goddard and Dak Prescott go to Team 10. Goddard off the board there, so it looks like I'm punting tight end. Mike Williams, Dalvin Cook, James Conner, and Mike, you are back on the clock. Yeah, Dallas Goddard would have been in contention here uh, for me had he dropped. Now we're looking at the tight ends. Evan Ingram, who I do like, but I also accept the reality that he had, it'll be some spike games and probably not as consistent as you hope. Uh, the Muth. I, I don't think we've talked about the Muth enough uh, as, as a, a tight end who's just had a great career to start. If Kenny Pickett is actually going to take that level up, I think that's going to help with Muth. What are, where, Top 10 tight end show on Monday. Uh, yeah, where where I'm really torn here, though, is I think that Deontay Johnson here in the eighth PPR, Andy, you brought it up. He's one of those guys that finished much higher. I mean, certainly zero touchdowns on the year will do that to you. But if I wanted to target the Muth later, I don't want to have Deontay and the Muth, but uh, I, I don't know if the Muth will make it back to me, so I'm just going to take Deontay. All right, I am going to keep punting the quarterback down the list. I'm the only team without one. And in a 10 team, I'm going to I'm going to take that gamble. I can keep waiting and waiting, which gives me some other options. I like some of these names at the running back position right now. And uh for the first time this season, oh, is it Javante time? Fresh off. No! Fresh. Yeah! <laughs> you are driving me insane. You are driving me insane. I'm going to kill you <laughs> i can't believe i'm like i i, I was on uh, mike was on the clock and i'm like oh good and he's taking his quarterback so i get javante i need him because he took miles sanders and i was left with cameron i need another shot so javante was oh, all that was left oh man oh and then you hear me say i'm gonna flip <laughs> this table over first you hear me say i'm gonna keep kicking the quarterback down the line oh uh by the way the most recent report on javante He's 100% according to his own staff. And he's on my team. It, I, that was the greatest mock draft reaction I've ever heard. Someone clip it. and We need that on socials. It, it, First it, murder threat in a mock this year. It still makes no sense. How is Javante possibly, <laughs> possibly 100% with that oh. knee injury? It makes no sense. All right, Jay. I quit. <laughs> I quit <laughs> this draft. Oh, oh man. you have to make another settle pick here. Oh, I do. I have to make another settle pick. Um, there, the wide receivers that are here to me, uh, there, there's a handful of them that I like. Um, that will come back to me. The, all the all the rookies that are still available, I would take any of them at my next pick. So I'm going to take a shot on another running back. I, I felt like because I have you know, only Mixon and Cameron Akers uh, that I, I I really want another running back. So I'm looking for upside here. We talked about him. 
But James Cook yeah. is a pass catching yeah. back on a great offense. He's a second year player. He's young, he's explosive, and he's been the talk of the town. So I will uh take James Cook here. Makes perfect sense. Uh love the pick. Mm. Would have been the pick if Javante wasn't there. Wanted to draft Javante for the first time. Jason, uh after Cook after Cook went Kirk, Pacheco, Addison. Well, I'm sure it was on your radar. Addison was who I wanted to come back to me the most. Montgomery, Traylon Burks, having a great camp. Rashad White, a great value at 903. I'm sure Mike was targeting him. Yeah, I was. It was really tight between Deontay or adding and Rashad White as my third running back. Uh, the, the gambles are not <laughs> they're not paying off for me here. What am I drafting? 106. Yeah. So Jason, Hogwash. Jason, I, I like my team, but I'm so mad at you, Andy, because it should be <laughs> it should be significantly better with a couple different picks. Um, you can make me mad here. I will. I hope. Um, I'm going to take Jahan Dotson. Uh, I know nope. a player, <laughs> a player that I know you really like. I do. Uh, wide receiver position. Dotson. Dotson. There you go. We've got yeah. Dotson here. Uh, it's a great pick, obviously. Uh, but I was actually targeting the rookie from Seattle, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Yeah. In a PPR league, I thought maybe you'd take him. I have Tyler Lockett, so he, oh, was, that's right. he was kind of off my board. All right, so Dodson and Smith and Jigba. Mike, you are on the clock. You've gone wide receiver the last couple rounds with Hollywood and Deontay, both great values in the seventh and eighth round. You're back up. And looking at – so I only have the two running backs for this particular draft. I have four more picks, so I, I need to start padding at least a little bit and looking at who's there. You know, we're talking – A.J. Dillon, Brian Robinson, Jamal Williams, Rashad Penny, who would have been very exciting until the Eagles are, are raining on my parade here. But there is one man who used to be my champion who should be catching way more passes. Maybe this is the first time we actually get Antonio Gibson utilized the way that he is supposed to be used. But Antonio, Antonio Gibson, pass catching running back in a PPR league, in the ninth round, sign me up. His uh, running mate, back-to-back -back ninth round picks. Brian Robinson went next, then Pickens, also having a, a pretty good camp. A.J. Dillon, Quentin Johnston, he was on the radar, going at 9-10. Brandon Cooks, Kadarius Toney, Fryermuth, and Juju. Mike, you are uh, you do need a tight end over these next three picks, otherwise you're free. I do, and that's actually that's right where I'm going to go. Fryer, I, I could have gotten Fryermuth, uh had I not gone with Deontay Johnson, but again, I'm I'm not really comfortable stacking up that many Pittsburgh Steelers should the passing attack not improve the way that we really want. But Evan Ingram is a guy who I like, and he, is, he managed to make it back to me in the 10th round. PPR, let's go. All right. You grabbed him, and uh, I, look, I keep, I keep thinking I'm going to take my quarterback, and then I keep sitting here with all of these pretty names on the board all, all this value Dude, just take yeah. your freaking quarterback <laughs> save your life there's only one player i want i swear to you if you take him i'm going to i'm going to just explode <laughs> just take your quarterback oh my you quarterback. goodness uh khalil herbert is oh. joining the roster here oh oh good in the 10th round honestly i i don't even know if i would have gone that way if yeah. i hadn't been trying to find the name that, I, you thought that was uh, i thought that was it i mean i thought a chain could have been it i thought that um yeah there's there's know, uh i thought gabe davis could have been is, it is I thought it a, flowers could have been it it yeah. is a wide receiver Okay, my guess was going to be the babe it is not the babe because oh. it's full ppr uh, I'm gonna take a gamble here. I I haven't drafted Zay? him. No, I guess I guess I was super safe. You guys have named like ten guys. Yeah, what bad guy are you taking? We're in the tenth round, and in a P full PPR, I'll go ahead and draft the guy who I don't know has the most receptions in a season in NFL history. Yeah, I did. Oh, it. Michael Thomas. In Michael Thomas, I uh, I feel like I need him at the Look, wide I'm, receiver position. I'm here for that. Okay, so uh, after Michael Tom, uh, I I made a horrible, horrible, <laughs> yeah! horrible, yeah! horrible. <laughs> Mistake. Unbelievable. Un Eat it. Un I am eating it. <laughs> I took a stupid Khalil Herbert. Oh, it was a great pick. And I all to, to ruin Jason and two teams take a backup and I end up without Tua or Deshaun Watson. Oh baby, yes. Oh baby, yes. <laughs> wow, that uh. is and, and would I trade Herbert for Watson now? Of course I would. That was a a gamble and I'm blaming the sleeper AI. A hundred percent because that is stupid. They took two backups, mm. um, but I'm going to have to eat it. Yeah. And uh, so Watson and two are gone. Jason, 
You I'm are. I'm going to take a player that I've loved the whole uh, the whole Life? time since. Well, not really, because I, I did love the film, but didn't like him for fantasy. But then where he got drafted, I've fallen in love with Devon A. Chain. I've talked about that. One of the players, I uh, I think he's my second highest uh, exposure running back right now in, in underdog. So I'll add him to the roster. Well, I have to draft a quarterback and a tight end, and my quarterbacks have been uh, stripped from my hands. And so I'm going to take Dalton Kincaid here to be my tight end. Mike, you are on the clock with your second to last pick. All right, so I have... My draft was going so perfect. <laughs> if I could have taken Watson in the 11th round, that would have been just... I would have unlocked Jason's. I love my team just now. Just grinning. You love your team because <laughs> mm -hmm. of me not getting somebody? Yep. Okay. <laughs> hey, fantasy football is wild. Wow, that was that was a ride, Mike. Go ahead. All right, we're at the back. This is ADP can just – you can just throw it right in the garbage now. This is where you are looking for – you're looking for upside. You're taking the players that you see a path, you believe something could happen. So at and I'm let's see I'm a little bit thin on the running back position so I got I got Pollard Madison and, and Antonio Gibson uh Samaje P Ryan it feels like the shine is really starting to go away he I think he'll be in, heavily involved still but it's yeah but fantasy involved and fantasy involved right. are, could be different yeah him. so he's kind of gotten off the board there he may live just to hurt Javante at this point versus being a big performance it's it's certainly possible and actually he, this this player still remains at the top of the of the ADP and he wasn't playing with the starters despite his second round draft capital but Zach Charbonnet should we get into the, further into the season oh, I'm in big trouble further up oh, oh my yes. gosh oh baby <laughs> yes Oh, baby, Anthony Richardson baby. was my contingency plan. Sorry to cut you off, Mike. No, but you're I'm, good. I'm watching three more backup <laughs> quarterbacks go off the mm. board. Anthony Richardson, Kirk Cousins, and Aaron Rodgers, who's always there mm. for the desperation final pick. Um, okay. But go. he was not there. He was not there, Mike. You are up. Russell right. Wilson's still available. He may be my quarterback. We'll find out. All right. We're going to uh, – this player, the, the vibes through the rookie season were pretty bad. The vibes going into the off season. They were pretty bad. The team took a wide receiver in the second round. That felt pretty bad. And yet, training camp, the beat report for this player has started to build and get a bit louder. And I'm going to take Sky Moore of the Kansas City Chiefs. Five quarterbacks have gone <laughs> in the 11th I really and 12th should have taken round. Yeah. Oh, I, Mike, I didn't say it because I was afraid you'd take Geno and leave me with yeah. just nothing. Gino's gonna have to be the pick here, and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be scanning that waiver wire, no. probably picking up a little uh, Kyler Murray action or Matthew Stafford action if need be. But the the schedule for Gino to start the year is so good that it's gonna be depressing that you high round quarterback guys end up with lower fancy points than my guy does in week one. Gino stacked with your uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Right. Gino at the end of the draft is incredible. Woo! Yeah, oh, Bryce Young's not my quarterback in week one. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, because this is a three-wide receiver plus a flex, full PPR, I really want to leave here with a handful of wide receivers. I'm going to take a guy who was a massive, massive disappointment last year. Adam Thielen. Oh, gosh. I would never. <laughs> I'm going way better. I'm going with Cortland Sutton, oh. the guy who has oh, no. re reportedly Jason, been the, the first read. This, it, no. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it cannot happen to me. If if Sean Payton turns around the Broncos and Cortland Sutton is the biggest beneficiary and he is the player who he was supposed to be and I drafted everywhere last year to be, mm -hmm. I will lose control. <laughs> I, I I've been rising on him uh, based on the fact that he's lost weight. He's looking well, no him. Tim Patrick and no Tim Patrick and Sean There was Payton no in Tim town. Patrick last year. He did not – Corlin Sutton, to be clear, I know he was missed by a bad quarterback. He looked awful last season. Mm -hmm. So the fact he lost some weight, whatever he needed to do to try to get healthy, be a part of this offense. Now, if you remember, he's playing the Michael Thomas X role in this offense. That was the plan. Mm -hmm. I... And so that is a high involvement position, but it's also one he's never really uh, – he hasn't had as many snaps in. Um, so we're done. We finished it up. I want to make a quick announcement, by the way. Uh, the UDK has a new feature. 
We just added oh, a yeah. brand new. We always have had the current ADP by scoring system sheet in the AD, in the uh, UDK, which is average draft position, so you can see where players are moving. We just added a new platform comparison ADP tool, which lets you see where players are going platform to platform. I talked about this on yesterday's show. You know, don't just go off of the sleeper ADP if you draft on ESPN. Don't go off the ESPN one if you if you draft on on Yahoo. Look at where they're going and and find those gaps between. Um, the platforms because uh, they move and shake every day. Yeah, I give you a perfect example here. J.K. Dobbins is a fifth round pick right now on Sleeper. He's a ninth round pick right now on ESPN. So, and I, I think Olave is a fourth rounder on ESPN, which is oh, that's a chef's kiss. Uh, final rosters here: ten team, three wide receiver PPR mock draft. I have Tyree Kill, Devonte Adams, Calvin Ridley. Mike Evans and Jackson Smith and Jigbat wide receiver. I I do my my biggest regret is the Khalil Herbert pick in the tenth round, uh, because I have five running backs already and good ones in Stevenson, Gibbs, Sanders, and Javante. Herbert probably didn't need him there. Could have gone quarterback. Could have gone wide receiver in a three wide. So I do regret that pick. It looked like a value in the tenth round. That would be a pick I'd try to flip if this was a real league. Kincaid and Geno are my tight end and quarterback. I, uh, I've got the Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews stack at the onesie positions. I am weakest at running back where I've got Joe Mixon, Cameron Akers, James Cook, and Devon A-Chain. And then my wide receivers are Jamar Chase, Amon Ross St. Brown, Tyler Lockett, Jahan Dodson, Michael Thomas, and Cortland Sutton. At wide receiver, I have Cooper Cup, Christopher Olave, Keenan Allen, Marquise Hollywood Brown, Deontay Johnson, and Sky Moore. At running back... Tony Pollard, Alexander Madison, Antonio Gibson, and Zach Charbonnet. My tight end is Evan Engram. And to go along with my Keenan Allen, I have Justin Herbert. I mentioned Khalil Herbert's my mistake pick. Do you have a, a pick you regret now that you look at your roster? Uh, it, or are you just totally happy and content? I, I don't think it's regret like, oh, I shouldn't have taken Cameron. Like, I shouldn't have. I should have taken Miles Sanders. But that was because of you mm. <laughs> robbing mm. me of beauty. Mm. No, I, I had a few points in the draft where it's it was unsure, but the the final product came together for me. All right, next week we have the top ten rankings episode. We have tips and tricks to win your league episode. We have another mock draft episode, and gentlemen, we have the twenty twenty three my guys episode next week. Oh, oh baby! Oh, check out that new ADP tool, ultimatedraftkit.com. Yet another resource for you to get ready for your drafts. Back with you next week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.